If an award-winning comic book writer accused someone else in the comic book industry of a felony, would you expect the comic book media to report it? That's how the latest chapter of Bleeding Fool's Whisper Network series opened. It's a reference to the ongoing legal battle between Bill Willingham and his former assistant, Stephanie Cook. Cook recently made news when she unsuccessfully tried to cancel Sean Gordon Murphy following his withdrawal of his cover from Doug Knopfel's Bigfoot Bill comic. She demanded Murphy withdraw his cover for Blake Northcott's Catwoman comic. The move seemed petty and completely unrelated, but it also showed Cook's mentality. This is a person who seems to think that she has the power and status to destroy two people's careers on a whim. This behavior is very common among the members of the Whisper Network listed in the previous Bleeding Fool article. These are women, and some men who think they're women, who have largely finagled their way into the industry by leaning on far-left identity politics, and they seem to have a deep-seated hatred of men, fans, and comics in general. Their interest in comics seems to be limited to using comics to break into the film industry and pure control. The type of person who would infiltrate the industry with the intent of damaging it just to hurt fans who like the industry isn't exactly going to have a lot of moral hesitation when it comes to other acts. We've seen numerous people within the Whisper Network lie about other creators, lie about fans, dox people, threaten fans, creators, and retailers, and collude to ruin the careers and lives of other creators. And this brings us back to Stephanie Cook, who, according to Bleeding Fool, allegedly embezzled upwards to 10 grand from Bill Willingham while working as his assistant. According to the article, quote, three years into her employment, Willingham became convinced that his assistant had betrayed him and that she had embezzled in excess of $10,000 from his accounts. Willingham filed charges with the local authorities, and a criminal case was launched. And he didn't just file charges. He stated this publicly on Twitter in 2015, quote, It needs to be reported that, during the three years she worked for me, Stephanie Cook embezzled and outright stole from me to a total in excess of $10,000. Unfortunately, I can't give you anything approaching an exact number yet, as we're still uncovering instances of theft. Willingham decided to go public when he saw Stephanie Cook advertising her services online. Bleeding Fool reached out to Willingham for a statement, and he replied in part, quote, Out of sheer embarrassment, I almost stayed quiet about what she did, as far as telling the comic community about her, because I really did make it ridiculously easy for her, in almost any way imaginable. It was when she started advertising her services around as a potential personal assistant to other comic book pros that I thought I had some sort of responsibility to speak up. I did that then and again now. He said in a press release from 2015 that Cook withdrew too much salary on his credit cards, used his money to fund her own projects, buy social media followers, and fly to Boston. Cook, of course, denied the allegations, claiming that Willingham never gave her a chance to defend herself before going public, which is an odd complaint. He's not just accusing you of stealing from him, Steph. He filed charges against you for embezzlement. That's a felony. Baby, he doesn't want to talk to you. He wants your ass to go to jail. And that's exactly what she would face if this went to trial and she was found guilty. In Minnesota, where this allegedly took place, she would face up to 10 years in prison and or fines up to $20,000. If she was found guilty of stealing less than 10 grand, she'd still face up to 5 years. This may be the reason why shortly after Willingham went public, Cook returned to her native country of Canada. If she returns to the U.S., she could be arrested. Now, she may have visited the U.S. for conventions since the charges were filed, but I doubt she's gone to Minnesota, and certainly not to the city where Willingham filed the charges. It could be, as Bleeding Fool speculates, that she's just waiting out the statute of limitations. They also mentioned that Cook claimed she considered getting a lawyer to file a lawsuit for slander, but that doesn't appear to have happened, and neither has Willingham heard from a lawyer working for her in regards to his criminal charges against her. So this whole situation looks really bad for Cook. There's no reason to assume Mullingham is lying. There's no history of him making other allegations against people. And to my knowledge, no one defending Cook. Bleeding Fool reports that various sources told him that Cook's alleged embezzling has been yet another open secret in the industry. And this is where it gets really interesting. Because Bleeding Fool found out that none of the major comic book news sites reported on this accusation. Except for one. Bleeding Cool. Yes, one Rich Johnston wrote an article about this when it happened. However, it was memory hold. Bleeding Fool points out that the article was one of the top articles in 2015, but the article has since been deleted from the site. All the other articles remain visible. Bleeding Fool mentions that Rich Johnston is very friendly with another Karen from the Whisper Network, walking cotton swab Alex DeCampi, so it's not difficult to believe that someone asked Johnston to pull the article. 
This may also be why no one else wrote about it, despite Mimi Cruz, co-owner of Night Flight Comics, publicly supporting Willingham twice. She stated on her blog, quote, As someone who's worked with Bill Willingham since 1990, I can say a couple of things about him and his character. Not all good, I'm afraid. One, he is generous with both his hard-earned money and artwork. Two, he is terrible about calling or emailing you back, but I guess I am too, so we are both bad. Three, he does not exaggerate about something that's serious. Four, if he has reported this to the police and has a case number, it is not a joke. Cook should already be trying to make public restitution. Public sympathy will not keep you out of jail. I applaud Willingham for making the situation public and in turn, hopefully, preventing others from being victimized in the same way. Bleeding Fool didn't list any examples of people trashing Willingham's character, and I couldn't find any either. So I'll assume most creators who know him don't think he's lying. So where is the fallout for Cook? Instead of being kept at arm's length until this was resolved, she's entrenched herself in the Whisper Network and gotten more work and praise in the comic book industry. This isn't a casual accusation. This is an accusation that she repeatedly stole money from a man and the industry seems to be willing to not only give her more work, but remain completely silent about it. Even after this Bleeding Fool article was published, the industry and comics media have remained mostly silent, except for people like B. Claymore, who claim that fans are using this to harass Cook. They're harassing Cook by mentioning the legal charges filed against her by a respected comic book writer? Seriously, I don't have the time for that kind of stupid. This just shows that there's a clear double standard at play. If you make a cover for someone they don't like, they will try to ruin your career. They did it to Raphael Albuquerque. They did it to Sean Gordon Murphy. They did it to Jay Lee. But still nearly 10 grand from a comic book creator, allegedly. And if you have the vagina, you're still good. They'll not only give you more work in the industry, but embrace you and give you power as well. Power you will then use to try to destroy the lives of creators you don't like, all while damseling. And this isn't even the juiciest part of the article. That's a whole video by itself because it's very clear these people collude to ruin other people's careers. I think your boy Zach is right that these articles and the failed attempt at canceling Jay Lee has these people completely on edge. But none of that changes that Bill Willingham filed charges against Stephanie Cook for embezzlement. And rather than face those charges, Cook fled to Canada and seems to have used her connections in the industry to keep the story out of the comic book media. That makes Cook look guilty as sin. But what do I know? I'm just some guy.